we're just gonna hey Now you did hit me. I hit you, I hit your hat. Where's the nunchucks? No. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Judge James. I am Judge Evie. This is Living for Crits. Welcome to the Walls Dungeon Tavern. Put my chucks away. You asked for them. No, put them down. You You're going to ruin them. You You're going to ruin my chucks. You asked for them. Happy yeah. Sunday. Happy Sunday. I hope you're all having a good Bride of Cyclops Con. And if you Ooh. didn't do Bride of Cyclops Con, Evie, uh, why didn't you do Bride of Cyclops Con? It was so much fun. Did you do it? I did do it. I ran two really? games every morning. Yesterday morning and this morning, I ran oh, I thought those were just your DCC Lankmore Grave Matters. In fact, Lex oh. there, he was in my game. And oh. it was a good time. And you, you should have played and GM'd. So, but you didn't. Uh-oh. I hear footsteps. Before we start, it sounds like someone's getting tea a little early here. Let's see. Shannon's on. Rob's on. Greg's on. And Lex. You ran seven miles this morning. It's not as good, but still awesome. I don't know. That'd be, that sounds fantastic. Hot chocolate. Guys, I got hot chocolate. And um, can I just show that I have Lucky Charms in here? Ooh. Like the marshmallows, yeah. Anyway, it's actually pretty great. <gasps> Bab, it's like Bab's on. Bab's here for the first time in like two million months. So, uh, for tonight's episode, very special. This is it's it's actually while there will be a lot of DCC content, this is not a DCC themed adventure. Despite Bride of Cyclops Con weekend, I'm wearing my I stayed home for the first Cyclops Con T-shirt. Um, you okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a episode we covering the concept of bad wrong fun and how we as a gamer species must get away from it. So we're going to start this off by at least in the stream chat asking everyone to be kind to each other and be nice to each other and be polite to each other. So uh, the more we can do that, the better as a people we can be. Uh, please note the pile behind me. I did not have time to move it. Um, these are actually all the D, I mean, this is the DCC core book here, but uh, these are all the DCC adventures I haven't finished yet that I own. Um, and just before the show, I was talking to Mark Plour on a Zoom chat, and I was discussing how I'd really like to, over the course of between now and the end of 2021, sort of a COVID goal, uh, to get through all of the, uh, essentially, it's, 34 DCC modules that I own or adventures. Uh, well, one, one I don't own yet. One is The Greatest Thieves of Lankmar, which hasn't come yet. But otherwise, I have like 33 other adventures, including the Chain Coffin, that have to get finished. And uh, I want to finish them. I want to pull off this like uh, Julie and Julia thing. You ever see Julie and Julia, the movie where that woman, um, you know, Amy Adams has to finish like every day for a whole year has to make something out of Julia Childs's cookbook. I think I could finish 33 or 34 adventures in one year. Okay. I think you can too. The, the challenge is going to be, uh, that's like, that's like three adventures a month. I mean, actually it's 18 months almost, right? I think finishing at least two adventures a month. Wow. The, the upside is I have a regular DCC group playing DCC Lankmar, but I would need to find a way either to convert an existing game I have going on. I won't touch you guys. Don't worry. I'm not going to mess with our Fantasy Age game. But uh, to, to, to do something and get through all this stuff, I think it would be pretty amazing to get through it. So we're going to see how hard this would be. That's right. I'm going to put some stuff up on... Uh, maybe on uh, for, for the Halloween week and see if I can get a couple adventures knocked out in the next few weeks just to see how this goes. So I'll give you an update on how that goes. Other news, Bride of Cyclops kind of weekend news. Uh, you know, between my two games this weekend and my DCC Lankmore game on Wednesday, I think I've developed my own style for uh, running uh, DCC Lankmar, and that is uh, continuous fourth wall breaks. Just constantly bust through the fourth wall. Judge Evie, could you please explain to our viewers what the fourth wall is? Um, cross gaming between other games, right? Yeah. Cross cross gaming? Yeah, like when our adventure combined with like 
um, the Shrubs, the OG Shrubs Adventure. No. Isn't you call no. that the fourth wall? The fourth so. wall. The fourth wall is when you, uh, when a fictional character or a character in a movie or TV show or game starts having a dialogue with the viewers of the show. Huh. So it's a moment like in 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 a. Uh, uh, a good example would be Deadpool when he talks to the viewers at home, oh. as if you're there. That's a break of the fourth wall. So like Beetlejuice when he talks to the audience. Yeah. As Bab says, breaking the fourth wall is the action of acknowledging that it is a game or a fictional setting within the game or breaking the fantasy. Uh, and Greg says, I cast Wall of a Fourth. Not, no, that's terrible. Wall of Fourth is awful. But I do enjoy doing that in uh, DCC Lankmar. Uh, especially since after reading DC, the third DCC book, and Fritz Leiber goes nuts with that story, uh, the one where he takes the you know fat from the Grand Monster to Earth. Um, I'm gonna sneeze. Please not sneeze on me. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Why? I finished Dragon Age Inquisition this morning at 1:30 in the morning. Um, you know, it's one of those games where I really wish that. Uh, I love the gameplay of Skyrim, but I love the setting of Dragon Age so much more. I really wish they could just kind of combine that into Sky Age or something. And, uh, damn, I, I, I don't know you what I'm going to play next. You finished Dragon Age? Yeah, this morning at 1.30. So. You awake at 1.30? That's so late, Dad. Try, like... 3.30. So I'm not sure what to play next. I might I might play, uh, I might go and play, uh, what's it called, uh, the Fire Emblem Three Houses. Well, you could play Animal Crossing again. No. All right, so let's cross? let's move into Judge Evie Presides. Yep, that's, that's great, great, yep. Mm -hmm. right. Dr. Moggs is on. No, my current list of games to complete, I have a list. I have, I have a list of all kinds of stuff. So my list of games to complete, I still have... Fire Emblem Three Houses, Witcher 3 on Switch, Dragon Quest XI, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Secret of Mana, and Final Fantasy III on DS. And that's three Japanese. I finished Final Fantasy VI uh, two weeks ago. And I finished Fa Dragon Animal Quest IX, on Diablo III, me and Cooper finished that. What? Because I'm not, in a, I'm not gonna finish, I'm not gonna finish Animal Crossing. Why? Because I don't like it that much. <gasps> no, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> And we're going to... Hey, wait a minute. I'm not a kid. Uh, anyone who doesn't... So, minute. Dr. Moggs, I will note, if you can't quite tell, but two of my new things here, it's really hard to see, is I have a surprised-looking lock and Celis from Final Fantasy VI, the uh, jewel, the perler pixel art. So I have the, the view of lock and Celis, kind of the, <gasps> that surprised look they do in the game. So those are both on the wall. And I have a Mog. My Moogle is over on the other side of the room. So. Should I read the questions? So let's start with Judge Evie Presides. Remember, if you'd like to send more questions uh, to uh, to Judge Evie after this, it's dccjudgeevie at gmail.com. Judge That's Evie, correct. the only judge who doesn't do any judging. Uh, that's not true. Moving on. Uh, this one is from Brian McKet. Oh. Where'd it go? This one is from Brian Brian McCow. Mc... No, it's not. It's a McCow. It's a McKay. Go ahead. Anyway. Hi, Brian. Aloha, judges. I have Aloha. Some questions for you. How have you introduced tabletop RPGs to family members who have never played and may have only heard of D and D, or are old enough to think? To... Wait, 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 wait. Or are old enough just to think about the satanic panic? I'm confused. But right, confused at what? How? Wait, wait. I need to think. I need to read it again. Well, let me read it. Okay. How have you introduced Taylor RPGs to family members who have never played and may only have heard of D and D or old enough to just to think about the Satanic Panic? Older gamers, they're like your grandparents. They've all played uh... D. They've all played. All three of your. We just you just sit them down and yeah, you just, just give them, them dice. You tell them they're doing it. Get them a snack, and they'll usually just do it. And yes, dccjudgev at gmail.com, not Yahoo. Did I say yeah. Yahoo? I didn't say Yahoo. I don't know. Uh, sit them down give and them tell them you're playing a game. Give them a baguette. And give them a, ba a baguette? Yeah. Everyone sits down if they have a baguette in their hands. What, you just give them a baguette and they sit down? 
Yeah. That's not how that works. Or like a roll. That's not how bread works. Yeah, it does. I roll when, when When Evie's grandmother, my mother-in-law, played, what we did was we got her to play Savage Worlds, and we were playing uh, a game in space with Disney characters. We were essentially playing Last Parsec, and we used the Disney Infinity character, so each player had a Disney Infinity and character we as a manager. Baguette. There was no baguettes involved. Uh, Evie was Stitch. Remember that? Remember oh, you were yeah. Stitch and Cooper was Buzz Lightyear? And I don't remember who your grandmother was. I think your grandmother was Baymax. Which, which grandma? Grandma, grandma? Grandma, grandma. Or Nini grandma? No, Nini and Pop Up, we got them to play. Um, how, what did they play? They played in Basic Fantasy RPG. Uh, my mother oh, has man. also played Numenera. Uh, she played Numenera at uh, at Disney World. Too. She's played... No, she hasn't, has she? She has. I don't think she has. I feel like she has. I don't think so. So, I, just sit them down. If they think... If, if they're going to bring up the satanic panic, you know... What's that? Just, it's... Up here in the 80s, they thought D&D was like all mazes and monsters, and you'll go kill yourself <laughs> if you're playing. You know the thing was on the show the other day? Yeah. If, uh, if they're going to bring up that, try a different game with them, maybe. That's not an RPG. That's like D&D. So, uh, you know, Savage Worlds, East Texas University. I mean, it's a really fun game. And uh, it's not D&D. They'll see no D&D in it, you know. And you could say it's kind of like Sabrina, the, which, the Chilling Tales of Sabrina, which yeah. has a lot of Satan in it. No panic. No panic. Tom Hanks was not good in Mazes of Monsters, Rob. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Alright, next. <laughs> Nothing was um, good in that movie. Have you. Two. This is also from Brian. Have you set up a local kids' RPG club through school and or game school? Game school? Mm. That's a thing. Although it would be a bit harder now with the pandemic. What are your suggestions for setting one up? We have a. We had. A game club. We did have a game club, but it wasn't through a school. It wasn't, yeah. We gave a bunch of flyers to the school that all the kids threw on the ground, like you do, like people do with flyers. I, I think you have, first, if you have to follow whatever the school rules are, obviously, and I would suggest if you, uh, you want to have this driven, obviously, by the kids and make sure they are pushing the games, right? I mean, I don't know if as a parent, you can really, uh, you're allowed to run a game club at a, at a school? I don't there know how that is works. A, there's a five, there's not, is there there's, a, five, a D and D club? Yeah. I figured. Yeah. It's like one of the no bad school, wrong fun. It's Sorry. like one of the school clubs. Like it's so like I on guess, the same level. When we as started a family clubs. gaming group in a gaming club in Pittsburgh, we had like a hundred members or so, and the, we just used Facebook to organize it. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but uh, you know, I there that's. I find it more challenging in some respects to do it those large in person things, uh, just because you you have to find a, a locate. Just finding a game store to play in can be hard. Um, you, but that is one way you could go is talk to your local game stores about maybe um, helping you put together something at the store, like a family night at the game store. But game stores are always, always, always looking for ways to bring in people post-COVID because there's a coronavirus pandemic on right now, so blah. Damn it. I didn't think about the pandemic. Next question. This is all post-pandemic questions. Not all of them. That one was. Brian, I'm sorry. just need, if we all pretend it's gone, you know, maybe it'll just go away, you know? Remember when Cyclops gone was like in April? That was in April? That was in April? No, it wasn't. So it was in April? No, it wasn't. <laughs> yes, it no, was. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No. Next question. This is, wait, 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 wait. Also, Brian. I'm so confused. Oh, oh, like the team. It's going to be a long show. Can the Eagles turn around their season, or should I just replay the <laughs> video of the Super Bowl every Sunday instead? Listen. We don't like sports. Well, first off, yeah, but I don't mind the Eagles. The first thing I would say oh. about, the, about the Eagles is the best thing to do with the Eagles. Have they sucked so far? Just remember... Just remember that they won a Super Bowl. That they won a Super Bowl once, and that was it. And it's all downhill from there. And they uh -huh. should have kept like Nick Foles and stuff. And they should never. What have... happened to Nick Foles? I mean, they got rid of Nick Foles. They did. All right, but I'm he's sorry. Good, right? Bab is a question. I feel so offended. You haven't read my question in the chat. I'll get to it. All right. Ew, Patriots. What game. was your question? Ugh. 
for both Evie and Mr. Jimothy, what is the funniest thing I've ever said? That is a very, like, all about Bab kind of question. Okay? Just saying. <laughs> the funniest uh, thing you ever uh, did? No, said. Said? I don't know. I don't know. Every, every How about tonight during our Fantasy Age game when, like, you just... Locked down so hard on the flavor text of the adventure and wouldn't <laughs> let the adventure progress. How funny wagon. is that? Wagon. Wagon. Uh, the wagon. The wagon scene was pretty. When you thought that when I said there was a, a hand <laughs> truck in the game, you all thought that there was a, uh, a, a, a like a Toyota. Um, all right. So oh, wait, let's. We got a background. Background. Grew. Oh, this is from Brian. Grew up in outside Philadelphia, mainly in Westchester. Travel around last year in an RV with family, playing a little bit of D&D &D with my son as we travel. That's awesome, Brian. Wow. We are not far from Westchester. Next question. Wait, wait, wait. We should... That one. No. Do, read, what? Because we have to read the questions that are sent to us. But I was reading... Do this. Go, go to this. Before. Go to this one. Next. Okay. Brian, that was an awesome question. Thank you so much. This one's from Greg. Woo! 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 Hashtag Greg. Greg. We stand Greg. That means... You don't know what that means? Do, do we stand? Read the question. Okay. Does this system come with a setting? Or do you just build what the system? world from scratch? What system? Oh, Fantasy Age. It said at the top. I just didn't look. You didn't read it. Does it come, so does Fantasy Age come with a setting? No. No. Fantasy Age does not come with a setting. It doesn't come with one. Um, I'm answering the question, too. So Fantasy Age uh, is uh, sort of a it's, it's a generic RPG in the in in the spirit of D and D in some ways, but it's easy to bolt it on to just about anything. Um, so the bolt. Dragon Age RPG uses setting agnostic. There you go, not I don't genetic know what that RPG. Means. Uh, but okay. It's a setting ag not agnostic but fantasy based uh, system. So you could. Uh, use it very easily to convert just about anything pretty quickly um that's that has sort of a you know a, a class and species Classy. set up um, there's enough special classes in the uh, uh special um species races in the companion that you could even run something like i mean, I mean you could essentially run eberron with fantasy age with very little difficulty um, if you look at one of the fantasy age or the age system core, uh, setting books, they tend to have the rules bolted in. So Dragon Age has the rules in the core book. Blue Rose has the rules in the core book. Good question, though. And we Next do love the system. It's great. Question. Next question. Questions. Thank you, Question Christina Aguilera. The judge Evie presides from William Keller. Hello. Hello. Serious question. What? Why is the DCC community so consistently nice? You almost never see any of the drama or pettiness other communities are full of. Does DCC make people nice? Are only nice people attracted to it? Judge Will. Why do you think the DCC community is not only nice, but in some ways the best gaming community in existence? Um, well, reason number one. Uh, uh, um, um, well, the first reason is the people that, like, you know, run it and stuff, you know, like, own it. We, they don't stand the no good people, you know? Like, if you're mean, then, like, it's known that you're mean. You know? Like, say some rude dude walks up, like, yeah, I heard about DCC, blah, 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 blah. Like, you said it last week. You would kick them out. And so it's the ability to be able to speak up and kick beat mean people out. So we're just left with nice people. Okay. Yeah. Um... That's an interesting take on it, Judge Evie. Very nice well, job. Well, what's your take on it? Not that. <laughs> I mean, answer. Um, it's logical. I think that I think that the DCC community uh, really encourages 
uh, niceness. I think no. <laughs> I think it really encourages a DIY atmosphere for authors, creators, and writers and, and artists to do more work in the community, and that uh, you know those those folks that uh, you know tend to, to work together to communicate together um, and they know each other and uh, I think for the most part uh, because the group does know each other and as Lex says a bit smaller and tight-knit although I think DCC is getting uh, I mean they, it's it's getting pretty big I think that since the group is uh, I don't know it has this DIY setup um, I think it does bring the groups together. As to the tone, I think the fact that Joe Goodman is such a great person and nice guy, and I think the fact that the main designers of the game are such great people. Facts. Uh, you know, like Harley, uh, you know, like <laughs> Michael, like everybody over there, uh, Michael Curtis, all the folks. I mean, I, it's, it's hard to, what? You went, like Harley. <laughs> There's really, there's really no one in the, there's really no one in the DCC community that I've interacted with that's been a negative interaction. Yep. Um, and they do whatever they can to make their events fun and festive. And pop in. Um, so I don't know. I think that really helps. Um, Rob disagrees. There are good people in all gaming circles, and I agree to that. However, I've never been in a gaming circle that has had as many good people percentage the main population as in Dungeon Crawl Classics in the DCC universe. And, um, you know, I, 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 can, I feel like I can say this from a somewhat position of authority as I have been a moderator in some very large uh, communities on Facebook, the internet, wherever, and, uh, you know, there is just a, 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 a refreshingness in the DCC verse. Again, not that there aren't great people in all communities, that is true, but I think proportionally, I think that the DCC community is a, I also think that in some ways it's, there's, I don't know, it's a fashion, it's a, it's a life, DCC is a lifestyle, you know? Yeah. I got DCC wear, right? So, yeah. I mean, you're, you gotta be always repping DCC. Bab's coming at me with comments. I see that. Nice. Bab, the whole thing tonight is to be yeah, nice. Yeah, be nice, nice, Bab. Any other questions or that it? That's it. These are great questions tonight. Nice to meet you. With yeah. enough questions, we can have an Ask Judge Evie and Judge James uh, sh episode. So that could be cool. Fickle GM, it is not a cult. In a while. By much. We are not a cult. So, but uh, send your questions to dccjudgeevie at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, bad, wrong, fun. What is it? So, we've all been there. You're on social media. And uh, someone says, I like this game because, uh, and everyone shows up and says why they don't like that game. And it's like, what the hell? And you're dealing now with a case of bad wrong fun, of someone telling you your game is dccjudgeevie at gmail.com doesn't work. Y yes, it what? does. It does work. Yeah. I mean, we're looking at it. It works. Uh, I don't know what to say. Did you type it in wrong? I, I for, oh, Scott's here. What's up, Scott? Mm -hmm. I totally forgot about the term bad wrong, bad wrong fun. I had seen it like once before, twice before, I think. But uh, Will Keller had brought it up uh, recently, and I think he bad wrong fun me. And I think this is a good topic for us because Judge Evie and I, are definitely guilty of bad wrong funning people. That's not true. It is. It we is. have bad wrong fun D and D fifth edition a lot. Maybe a just, lot, a lot. Maybe just a little bit of a lot. And it's not a lot, lot. Uh, a lot. But, but, but like a lot, a little bit, a, a lot. lot. A lot. And uh, with with that yeah. said, since last week was about you know the dark side of gaming, we thought that today we discussed you know the bad wrong funning what it is so just if you don't know what we're talking about it is uh i saw it and it had said uh rpg.net had uh called it at one point in time illegitimate enjoyment also you're having fun wrong um ooh, uh fickle gm calls it also said one true wayism um and 
you know, it is common everywhere, but is especially common in tabletop RPGs. And I guess one question, why do we feel, why do you think people are, feel like, you know, if they hear someone talking about a game, that they have to go straight to why they don't like that game? Uh, probably to prove that their game is better than yours. So it, it's, a, it's a method of attaining superiority. Pretty much. Why? Why does someone do that? I think part of it is also to... it's also probably because they want you to play their game we're gonna cover both those here I think those are very wow. good points because I uh, answered a question correctly you did nice job wow, thank you so it's you. an attempt to be in the cool club uh, to be part of the tribe uh, as Keller says the in tribe and out tribe is core human nature totally uh, Dr. Mog says kind of like console wars I want more people on my system so my system gets more games. But does bring up bad, wrong, fun help this? Does this help anyone bring more people in? I mean, look at uh, look at the negative effects, okay? So it's more of a turnoff to a system than a, a, like to bring you into the fold because you're showing people that maybe as fans, we're, we're jerks. As if we're trashing on 5e, which we should never be doing anyway because Goodman Games sells 5th edition products. And it's true. But when we trash 5e or beat up on, I don't know, my our friend Shannon for playing 5e, as my friend Mark and I do a lot, <laughs> you know? When we beat up Shannon, we're just telling him, you know what? We're evil, mean DCC people. And that's who we are. And now this has become an episode of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> um, the other thing is that maybe you want to be part of a special clique and a special club or a small tribe or whatever, but the game companies that sell these games, they don't want to be part of a small special clique selling the games. They want to expand their sales. They want to make their games more mainstream. It does not help a game company to just sell a few copies of their game. They need to get these these games out there. They want to be larger. They want to increase revenue. So uh, those are the negative effects. Any other negative effects to bad, wrong, fun, funism you can think of? Uh, hmm. Here comes the Evie. Hmm, hmm, hmm. We'll go to the next thing, the positive thing to do. Yeah. And yeah. why don't you think of, as we're getting close to it, why don't you start thinking of, uh, at some point, your outro ASMR so we're not waiting for seven years. Okay, um, I'll think of it right now. On the other side, I think that we do really need to uh, to look at being more positive advocates for our games. Uh, you know, uh, Fickle GM says, suddenly Jim and Mark aren't repping the nice cult of DCC in a very good light. Actually, I... Th still think we are repping the DCC uh, group, or call, if you want to call it, in a better light by doing it in a positive manner, okay? Promote the good of the games you're playing. That's a positive advocate, positive, uh, positive advocacy, okay? Uh, talk, uh, if you're talking to a fan of another game system and you play a game that has similarities, talk up the common ground. So, you know, discuss uh, what's common about your game to their game uh, and why your game might, if you see what they like. This was something Jen was talking about. We were on a long walk last week discussing this topic. You know, like play up what you like about your game and why the other person would like it. Oh, you like 5th edition. You should come try DCC. Well, why? Because DCC has classes and you, you like... Uh, you, you, you like class-based RPGs like D&D, &D, and DCC has that, a D20 mechanic. It does something different. Instead of having advantage and disadvantage, it has a die step, and you get more fun dice. That's fun. Instead of saying, DCC's hardcore, and it's going to kill your characters off, and huzzah. Mm. There's also the option of using gateway, gateway games, like for 5e. Maybe uh, if you want to get your friends who are playing 5e to play DCC, one option is to run one of Goodman's 5e products for them to show them the quality of the, five of the DCC work. Because let's be honest, 
DCC Adventures are some of, if not the best adventure modules that are written. So you can start bringing people over that way. But then also be open to learning about other systems. And it doesn't mean you have to play them. And it doesn't mean you have to like them. This year, um, you know, I have tried multiple new games from Shadow of the Demon Lord, Fantasy Age, Swords of the Serpentine, uh, the, uh, uh, Ryutama. Some I like more than others. Not loving on Ryutama. I'm trying it. Not loving it. Really enjoyed Shadow of the Demon Lord. I like Fantasy Age. Sh Swords of the Serpentine. I need a few more shots with that, but I enjoyed that. So I'm trying to expand what I'm playing. Um, and Bab is going to Zoom lecture right now. What do you think this show is? We don't play games on this show. We just chat. Yeah. Greg likes a variety of systems, but don't want to own two dozen books. Um, I want to own two, two dozen. Books. Uh, Fickle GM. So a Goodman Five E module is like marijuana, a gateway drug to DCC. Huh. 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 Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. I guess. Um, so the moral here, because we're getting to a moral here, uh, the moral, moral of the story, story here, the topic tonight, and we're going to move on, okay. is... We already said the topic of tonight. The moral is no. it's fine with trying to get and expand your gaming tribe, your gaming group, your gaming collective of people playing the same collective. game. But try to do so by talking up the positive and not talking shit on people and their game. Okay? That's all I'm saying. In closing, it's yeah. fine to not like a game. Yep. And it's even fine to occasionally mention why you don't like something if asked directly. Mm -hmm. But unless you're doing some kind of review or are balancing the good with the bad in a professional manner, stop taking these enormous craps on other people uh, in the gaming universe, especially on social media. It does no, no one any good. Um, and if you can take a stance of positive advocacy, positive. you can, in turn, uh, you know, bring more people into the fold, especially into the indie RPG fold, the, fo the games that are made by smaller game companies. Um, I will forever probably be more of, of, a, of a, have a preference for the smaller game companies and their games, but I will make sure that going forward, I am more careful not to yuck anyone's yum and to be more gaming positive. And I even changed how, how we are going to do our exit of this, like our, our, our final statements here. So you'll see. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, what, mo what philosophy does this line up with? I don't know. Um, Scott says, as long as RPGs are bringing people to the games, it's a win regardless of the system. Yes. Sick. There is that. There are some games written by some real scumbags, though, and don't Whoa. play those. Oh, don't call people scumbags, Dad. I don't know. If the person who wrote the game's a scumbag, don't play it. Oh, yeah, don't play it then. Just saying. Mm -hmm. But none of the games I, I play right now are. What did you scumbags. change? Uh, this part. Uh... All right. Oh. So, um, let's move on to the next part of the show. Yeah. Oh, no, that's not your ASMR. It is! No, it's not! No! Yeah, it's a good ASMR. What's wrong with it? No. What's wrong with it? All right, I'll change it. No, 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 don't change it. No, bad. I'm no. changing it. No, I'm changing don't change it. it. Don't change it. All right, so, um, stop. No. I was going to write mine. Oh, what's yours? Go ahead. I'll write I'll it. I'm going to mess mine up. Uh, Kickstarter shoutouts. Uh, the Snow Cone and Sundays DCC and RPG dice sets by Impact Miniatures are Impact Dice are still out there. Get on your DCC dice now. However, if you don't play DCC, you can still get other dice there. So that's pretty rad. And uh, you know, there you go. Um, uh, road crew shoutouts. What's the next road crew thing, guys? What's uh, the yeah, we're what? we're past. Hmm. What are we going to talk about? Um, I do want to do as much as possible. Oh, uh, Greg says there's uh, Savage Worlds has Halloween. So I guess go over to, I think that's uh, uh, www.peginc.com to see what Pinnacle's got going on for Halloween. I know Holler is their their uh, 
they're post-apocalyptic. It's a third-party post-apocalyptic uh, setting, if I'm not incorrect here. Why is it really on here? I know. Um, that takes place in, like, Appalachia. Um, so that should be cool. Um, haven't read it or looked at it yet. Is it an official setting? I didn't know it was an official setting. Official. I thought it was an unofficial. Official. I thought it was third-party. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool. That's yeah. very cool. Um, anyway, so for the road crew, uh, you know, I do want to dig into some road crew events over the next 18 months and run through all these modules. If you haven't seen or you didn't hear me earlier, I have 34 modules that I have to get through or 35 modules. Everything from Escape from the Shrouded Fen to uh, Abbott in the Woods, Anaheim Crawl, X Crawl New Year's Eve, Boston Crawl, Ganglers of Lankmar, Acting Up in Lankmar, Blasphemy and Larceny in Lankmar, Violets for Votus Shaw, Rats of Ilkmar, Fences for Judas Folly, Unholy Nights in Lankmar, Last Will of Testament, Obadiah Falkner, One Who Watched from Below, Elzamon in the Blood Drinking Box, The Imperishable Sor Sorceress, Cliff Carrier's Gambit, Tower of Time, Undulating Corruption, Infernal Corrupt. Crucible of Cesar Khan the Mad, Creep, Scra Creep, Scribe, Creep, The Sea Queen, sea Queen Escapes, Moon Saves of the Cannibal Kingdom, Beyond the Black Gate, Thirteenth Skull, Colossus Arise, Corpse That Love Built, Twilight of the Solstice, Fates Fell Hand, Neon Knight, Strange Knight, The Pint and Pony, Chain Coffin, Sky Mash, The Purple Planet, and when it comes, Greatest Thieves of Lankmar. I oh want to find out a way between now and the end of 2021 to freaking finish all these modules so that i could feel good about you know playing more buying more modules you know i keep feeling this this pressure and maybe it's maybe it's just middle age kicking in with that midlife crisis i'm 41 and i want to do something with this i don't want to i don't want a pile of books wait this is your midlife crisis yeah why it is a midlife crisis really you'll find out later oh make a second dcc group I, I've, I, I will have to reconfigure my gaming to do that. Oh, Shannon would play DCC? Oh, my is like a gosh. Not, does that not happen? That'd be pretty cool. Shannon's yeah. actually played DCC Star Wars with us. He's a good dude. I have to play 5e with him. He's going to run 5e with me when the, when the, turn, when the uh, tournament's over. When the pandemic's over. <laughs> when yeah. the tournament's over. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, when your midlife crisis is born. Oh, look at Jordan. Who was your favorite Logabot wizard and why was it Jordan? Oh, that's tough, man. I had I had two good Logabots. Oh. Uh, Log Logabot was uh was one of the pregens. Uh oh, I should note, if you're gonna run any uh if you're gonna run any DCC Lankmar tournament stuff and um uh, not tournament stuff, uh uh adventure stuff for anything for road crew events and you need pregens uh hit me up you can email evie at dccjudge evie at gmail.com i do okay. have uh second level pregens i made for this weekend's games of the of grave matters so you could easily bump them up a level or take them down a level if you want and you have you know six pregens two warriors two thieves and two wizards so I just know there's, it, it, you can't really find pregens easily for DCC Lankmar that aren't like the handwritten sheets ones that came out in 2016 or 17 for the preview of DCC Lankmar. So I will... Bab misses DCC? That's unheard of. I didn't think that's... You guys were like, you know, all cool with... I mean, what's his name? Josh doesn't want to play DCC. Yeah. But I love Fantasy Age 2. There you go. John doesn't want to play DCC. I know. It's crazy, man. It is crazy. Crazy. Cray-cray. 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 All right. Featured organizations for good. Uh, still looking for folks who are great gamers running for public office. I have two friends uh, that are running for office. David Wilson Brown in the 5th District of North Carolina at uh, dwbforcongress.com. Uh, and then Bill Saxon for the 73rd State House District in Michigan at billinthehouse.com. If you know of any fellow gamers out there who are running for public office, please tell me. I would be more than happy to, 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 to spread their information, put them in here, so long as they're not a Republican. Yep. And that that'd be okay otherwise. Because that's just that's just how we roll. Yep. 
Uh, sorry, we're political. Okay, where to find us elsewhere? Uh, go ahead, uh, Judge Evie. At I live for crits on Twitter, living for crits on Instagram, and search living for crits on YouTube. All right, with that said, be safe, be healthy, and be kind. What was the old one? Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay, oh, stay together. Stay together, yeah. yeah. Be kind, okay? Yeah, Bab. And I'm just going to say DCC forever. And I wasn't going to say what Judge Evie said. I'm going to say. He was going to say Bog Champ, guys. Oh, I wasn't going to yes, say Bog Champ. I wasn't going to say it. Yes, you were. I wasn't going to say you it. You were Bog Champ, Randy, all caps. Oh, well, goodbye.